Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Monday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Just two hours, exactly, before New Horizon spacecraft hurls by Ultima Thule one billion miles further than Pluto before your very lives. This is an artist's impression, clearly. Join us for the journey. Here's the trajectory, full trajectory of New Horizons. Whipped outside of Earth and Mars, past Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, and is now a billion miles and quickly approaching 2014 MU69 newly named Ultima Thule in the Kuiper Belt. In fact, the furthest object ever to be observed at close distance, ever. New Horizons Space Probe closes in for historic New Year's Day flyby in less than two hours now, streaking through space at nine miles per second. NASA's New Horizon Probe is closing in. Heads up. Look at it. It's closing in. See that? It just flew by. Amazing. There it is. This is the most distant body ever explored. Up to this point, 2014 MU69, now dubbed Ultima Thule, beyond the known world, in a NASA naming contest, has been less than a dim speck. And now... The first image is coming out yesterday. Look at that. It's the best we can do. Raw and sharpened. Now, I find it appalling that astrophysicists and astronomers are claiming that this object is going to be icy and is a remnant of the beginning of the formation of our solar system. That is absolute garbage. I cannot even believe they have PhDs. I would be embarrassed to say that. In fact, when I hear a so-called scientist saying it, it makes my skin crawl. It's like, ah, oh, frauds. Every single object we've ever visited is in fact exactly not what all these frauds have said it would be. At some point, they have to realize that they are all wrong all the time. And this won't be any different. They're going to be wrong this time. Again, here we are over at Pluto.jetpropulsionlabs.edu. Beyond Pluto, one hour and 58 minutes now. Here's the distance closing rapidly. This is updated to the second. Come check it out. And we're going to close this video off with thanking you for caring about the universe that you live in enough to come and get this information from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Here we are live over at NASA from the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab an hour and 57 minutes before we fly by Ultima Thule. Let's see what they have to say. Just about to start, folks. Origins as an ambitious concept to its historic exploration of Pluto in the Kuiper Belt, the New Horizons mission has been a team effort, pulling expertise from institutions from around the nation. To recognize the members of this team are principal investigator Dr. Alan Stern from the Southwest Research Institute and Helene Winters, New Horizons project manager from the Applied Physics Laboratory. I'm Helene Winters, project manager for New Horizons. 
And I'm Alan Stern, the Mission PI. If you don't know what that stands for, it's an official NASA acronym. It stands for the Principal Instigator. <laughs> As I said earlier this evening, uh, spaceflight is a team sport. And the New Horizons team is something that we want to tell you about tonight. Uh, when we started, when we built New Horizons way back in the 2000s, um, it was a really big team. In fact, we once estimated that with all the contractors, not just the APL and Southwest team and the science team, but with all the contractors that built the launch vehicle and our nuclear power supply and all of the subsystems for the spacecraft and the scientific instruments, that there were 2,500 men and women working on New Horizons at one point or another. But since we launched the spacecraft, we shrunk that down to just a very small flight crew of about 50 people who operate the entire mission during uh, most of the years. And then it bulks up around the flybys. Right now, we're about 150 here for the Ultima Thule flyby. And so what we want to do is tell you about the, the, this is really a team of teams. And we want to tell you about some of the sub teams that are involved and what they do and who their leadership is. And Helene's going to kick that off. Oh, sure. Um, this team is among the, the sharpest, most dedicated collegial groups of professionals. So we did want to give a shout out to some of the sub teams. And certainly we won't, we'll recognize a small fraction of the folks who've contributed to this. But the first team we wanted to give a shout out to was Mission Operations. They're led by Alice Bowman. She's the Mission Operations Manager, also known as the mom. Um, they, it, it's a simplistic explanation here, but they, um, they compose the command sequences that are sent to the spacecraft that tell the instruments and the, the subsystems what to do. And they get the telemetry back down. And they're our first line of defense on the ground if anything goes wrong. So if Alice calls me at, in the wee hours of the morning, my heart beats a little faster. But um, they, they're a wonderful team, and they keep everything running. Yeah. I want to tell you about a second team. It's our engineering team run by Chris Herzman here at APL. The engineering team consists of uh, subsystem leads for each of the systems on board New Horizons. So the thermal system, the power system, for computing, for guidance, and on down the line. And there are also leads for each of the seven scientific instruments aboard. Helene? Yes. Um, the next team we wanted to give a shout out to is the science team. They are led by Alan Stern, our principal investigator. Um, they, we have um, some science theme teams within there. Our science team sets forth the, the um, goals that we want to achieve, our objectives for the mission. And um, with, with the concurrence and guidance from NASA, we execute those goals, execute the, that, um, those goals in the mission. And then we get the telemetry down, and the science team evaluates, analyzes the telemetry, and publishes the results. The next thing that I want to tell you about is our public-facing side. Uh, which consists of our public affairs officer, Mike Buckley, and our uh, engagement and communications officer, Carrie Beiser. And they're the ones that make all of this uh, that you see and you read and you learn about from our website uh, to uh, all of the media activities that we take place, to the social media, to all of the uh, education and school engagement, all of that possible. And we have Mark Holdridge was our encounter mission manager. So he coordinated all this um, for the encounter, planned the timeline, and executed the testing and so forth. Um, we have several other people who helped us get to where we need to be. Uh, we have the mission design team led by Yan Yanping Guo. Um, they set out the trajectory for us. And we have the navigators. Um, the navigation team for our, our prime med navigation team is led by Fred Pelletier of Kinetics. And we have um, an independent nav team who acts as our checks and balances in there. And that's led by Dylan Boone of JPL. And last but not least, we have Gabe Rogers, who, is, who leads our guidance and control team, who keeps us pointing in the right direction. Well, a little while earlier, you heard about our mission operations control team that sits in that cool mission control center here across campus and, and drives the spacecraft, more or less. But we also have a science operations team back in Boulder that's responsible for what we call the SOC, or the Science Operations Center, which really has two functions. We call it an uplink side, which consists of uh, creating all of the command load portions to operate the seven scientific instruments. Uh, and that's run by Debbie Rose, 
uh, in Boulder at the Southwest Research Institute. And then we have a downlink side that's responsible for receiving and decoding all the data, running all the data reduction pipelines, and ultimately archiving the data in the planetary data system. And that's run by Jillian Redfern, also at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder. Okay. We also wanted to give a shout out to our folks at the folks at um, the Deep Space Network. Kathleen Harmon there is our mission interface manager. Um, they're responsible for, for running the, the satellite dishes and helping us communicate with the spacecraft, both to send commands. If you want to got, guys want to watch out. more about New Horizons, uh, Ultima Thule flyby, come check out the JHU Applied Physics Lab site, subscribe, or watch the show. I hope you get out there. There's only one hour and 51 minutes left. This will be up shortly. Check out the trajectory. Get informed. And be prepared for the unexpected. We don't know what this object will look like. We don't know why the brightness is not changing. And it will be the furthest object a billion miles further than Pluto that we ever fly by. These are the pictures from yesterday. Oh. Oh. Let me open that up for you. And you can see the oblate size of the photo right there, sharpened. So we're closing in on Ultima Thule. It's only a matter of time. One hour and 50 minutes. I hope you watch it. Be safe.